Hey everyone and welcome to Ravenport and Farming Simulator 19. So we're going to be starting a new Let's Play series on this map. Um, which does look very nice indeed. I am really impressed so far with FS19 from what I've seen and played. Um, mostly just on Felsbrunn for the time lapse series. Um, I'm really interested to get a good amount of play on this map. So I have had a good look around on here. I spent an hour or so last night having a look around the map, going around the different fields and trying to decide on somewhere to actually start this let's play. And unfortunately I couldn't really find many places that were any better than where everyone else is basically starting. I wanted to try and find somewhere different but uh, there's not really many places on the map. So we're down here in the bottom right hand corner by fields 24, 25 and 26. And that's where we're going to buy our first bit of land. So we've got this area here which is quite a large piece of land. It is fairly expensive $362,000. But we do get the three fields already in place. And a large area for placeables as well. And obviously a few trees we could cut down over this way. So we're going to buy that one. And I'm also going to buy this section of land here, which has got field 19 in, which is $210,000. And that will be all our land for now. Hopefully in the future we can expand. We've got like field 23 in this area here, which is not too far away. And it's 202000 Well, We've got field 17 up here, which is only £3,000 more and looks like a much bigger field. Um, and is also just a short distance from our main farm. So we've got plenty of options. I mean, field 16 is only 137,000. 15, 126, and then 14, there's just 102. So there's a few fields just up here which are not too bad price wise. Obviously, you're looking at some of the bigger fields 1.2 million. Uh, it's going to be a long time before we can afford one of those. So that's our first bit of land purchased. What we're going to do is have a look at what's in the field. So we've got this field here which is growing cotton, which I'm not going to harvest. There's no point in leasing equipment to harvest cotton on a field that small. It is completely and absolutely pointless. So we'll plough that in. It should give us... I mean, it's full fertilisation now, so whether that will remain when we plow it in and reseed that field, I don't know. Um, this field, we've got canola, which is fine. That's 100% fertilised, uh, no weeds currently. Uh, this one's got sunflowers, which will mean we need to get two different header types. So I may plow that one in as well and reseed that with something we can do with a standard header. And I believe the field 19 is potatoes, which I don't think is going to be worth leasing the equipment to do if it is potatoes. Yes, uh, it's ready to harvest, but it requires plowing. It's only 50% fertilized. So the yields are not going to be great anyway. So it might be better to just plow that in as it needs plowing anyway. And not waste our time leasing potato equipment at this point so what we need to do is get ourselves a tractor and a plow and we'll make a start on that okay so we're up at Carlo's reliable motors sounds more like a uh, car showroom than a uh, agricultural dealership but I've been assured we can buy some farm equipment here so if we just go and have a look in the shop and first off, we're going to need a tractor to get going. And I'm thinking of getting a small tractor. No, I will think I'm thinking about getting the case maximum to start with as a medium tractor. As it's pretty versatile with what it can do with the different wheel options. So we've got wheel weights, wide tires, wide tires, weights, narrow tires, rear twin wheels, twin wheels. And then standard, um, we can also boost the horsepower up to 175, which isn't too bad for an extra 15,000. So if we go that and then rear twins as 
within the US and that's what I ever see is a lot of vehicles with rear twin so we'll go with that and uh, we do want a front loader attacher and we're going to buy that one that's $132,500 for our first tractor and now we need a plow now I am going to go with a subsoiler because these act as plows but they also leave the cultivated texture so we can then go over and we'll go for the coon and then we can use that with the cedar so we get that and we'll get a front weight which is here so we'll go for the 900 and good thing is we can match the color up to the case i h red uh, let's buy that one so there's our new subsoiler our new weight and our new case 145 maxim So we'll do we'll get the subsoiler on, we'll get back down to the farm and make a start on getting the cotton field and potato field and also the sunflowers. We'll get all those uh worked on and getting red ready for seeding. So let's get some beacons on. And head back down to the farm which is not too far away um, I do like Felsbrunn and I'm sure this map's probably very similar the way they've done the layout of Felsbrunn it makes it feel like the map is absolutely huge even though it's the same size as a standard map from 17 it does feel very big and I probably chose on my time lapse the worst field to start with right at the top of the map and you do have to go quite a far distance around to try and get anywhere <laughs> to the uh, cell points and stuff but uh, once I've got all the equipment and a big trailer it won't be too bad so here we are straight into our farm on this uh, dead end road and we'll get to work on the potato field We just turn the map off. So what I'm planning on doing is we'll just buy the equipment as and when we need it. Rather than going out buying everything and then coming back. Uh, just keep going backwards and forwards to the store to get everything here. We can start work on our fields and then go back and get what we need when we need it. So obviously a few things we can need is a seeder to get these fields seeded. We're going to need some sort of fertilization and a fertilized spreader or a sprayer and something for weeding as well. So, so far my early thoughts on the game is I really do like it. I believe there's a, quite a lot of people that are really bashing it, really don't like it. Um, oh yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. Looks great. I had that one slight issue with the time lapse where my that was down to my graphics driver requiring an update, which I hadn't realised and it was causing a few issues with the recording but other than that I've had no problems whatsoever the tractors look amazing uh, they have done a really good job with the detail especially in cab with all the new textures it does look very very nice and even the sounds on the tractors sound a lot better as well in my opinion So what we're going to do is we'll do a, a bit of a time lapse, get these fields all 
subsoiled and ready for seeding and then we can go and get ourselves a seeder. Okay, so that's us all done with the subsoiling. We've got the free, um, yeah, free fields done. And if we take a look at the map on the soil composition section and go to our fields. So you can see the fertilization. We've got 100% fertilization on 24 and 26. Field 19 will need another layer as it's a bit patchy. And the problem with that one is where it's um, subsoiled the crop in it's got the extra fertilization but as we was driving over the crop it was destroying it ahead of subsoiling it in so that's why it's a bit patchy with that one but if we take off the fertilization you can see it doesn't need plowing now none of them require lime at this point and we've got no weeds so they're all ready for planting uh, 19 will just need that one extra layer of fertilization um, but that's all done so we need to go and get the cedar and get some seed um, we also need to look at getting some sort of storage shed or building put up now one thing i really don't like is we can't get rid of any of this junk um which is a bit annoying because this is quite a nice flat area here oh. um, can we pick that up no nope. Oh, it's not letting me pick it up um yeah it it's a nice flat area and it's a really annoying that you can't get rid of this junk i know if you start off an easy mode you get some decorative buildings which uh to be honest are completely pointless in my view if you take a look at the placeables um decoration yeah it may look nice but eight thousand for a building that does nothing other than adds a bit of something to look at um i really just don't see the point of these buildings at all i mean farm storage farm stable you think oh yeah we can store like horses in there or something use it but they are just decoration um even that one the old barn 
you can't use it you can't store any vehicles in it so they're just a complete waste of time to be honest the farmhouse is obviously got the added benefit we can sleep at night but i'm not prepared to pay three hundred fifty thousand dollars just to be able to skip the night at this stage it is something we will look at getting when we've got a bit more money uh, but for now i'd rather spend that money on other things um so we do need to get a cedar and we'll go for the coon and we can link that up to the subsoiler in the future if we need to so we can subsoil and seed at the same time um so that's cedars which is this one so it's a 100 horsepower requirement for that on its own obviously and then if you link it to the power harrow section or the subsoiler section you need to bear in mind that that's going to increase the horsepower requirement so we'll buy that one it's only 14,000 and there is also the planter attachment as well to go with that so we can uh, use it for multiple things and then we need the seed hopper to go on the front and that holds 1500 litres of seed um, one thing I'm also going to do is buy the front loader and that one's for 90 I don't know if there's any tractors it's less than 90 horsepower isn't there or is that 90 upwards 150 upwards and um, we'll go with this one I don't know because our tractor's below 150 standard uh, but no it's more <laughs> i'm not sure um so we'll go for the case red and buy that one um uh, we get i don't know what to go for in my experience pallet bail spikes work really well as pallet forks and work better than the actual pallet forks so i might just go for the bail spike straight off and then we can obviously use that so we'll go for case red on that one as well Keep it all matching. Um, we don't need any other attachment just yet. And seed, so we need some pallets. One of the good things now, obviously, is being able to buy bales. So we need a seed bag. So these are 1000 litre. We can get two of those. So we need to drop the front weight off and then I'll head back up to the store to pick up the cedar and then we can get back here and start getting some of these fields seeded. Okay, so we're at the store and we just need to get all this attached up. So if we get the front loader on first. One thing I really don't like is that big massive huge box for the attachment that comes up. Um, I really wish there was a way to disable that. Not sure if there actually is, I've not found one. Um, it's just a little bit excessive I can understand if you're a beginner to the game I've never played it before it does simplify it a little bit so you can kind of see and they do seem to have increased the distance you can actually attach things as well um, but yeah, I wish there was a way to get rid of that box hopefully they will uh, patch it at the time add an option in to remove it I don't know why they just didn't keep the the symbol like they did on the old one where you just had the little icon come up on the hood down in the left hand corner so if I just drop the seed hopper back down and then what we'll do is pick up this pallet so we can take it all down at the same time I think I do need to increase the speed at which the uh, front loader works is that actually going to pick up? Ah, uh, are they going to tell me now that they've changed it so you can't pick up a pallet with the bells? But I know we can. 
There we go. I thought that uh, thought that changed it so we wouldn't be able to use the battle spikes for pallets then. So if we get this back on, and then get the actual seed. Oh, yeah. While I'm here, um, I am going to buy the power harrow section as well. Uh, which is where am I looking? Power harrows. So we'll get this as well, and then we can take it all back at the same time. Because we are going to need to use this um, so we can direct drill. Yeah, that is right. I was thinking that I got it the wrong way around. So we just lower that down and get the cedar on. So we don't need to use the power harrow section now because we've obviously got the subsoiled state with the um so it's already like ploughed cultivated so we can go straight on with just the seed cedar so let's get back these um get these back to the farm and uh, start getting some seed in the ground okay so we're back at the farm and this does look like some <laughs> Some really weird contraption <laughs> The front load run up in the air like that and the seed hopper and everything It's a very interesting sight, so if we uh, drop off The uh, cedar first Nope, wrong one. I'm going to detach that one first. Then drop off the power harrow. Because we don't need that one just yet. Lower that one down. And get that one disconnected. And then we just need to drop the hopper off and get the pallet off out of the way. Uh, we may need to get a small, uh, the small flatbed trailer, so we can bring a few pallets of seed and fertilizer down in one go, at some point. Uh, but for now, if we just drop all this off that we don't need. So I'm thinking we want to keep two crops to grow that we can harvest with the same header. So we've got wheat, oats, uh, barley, soybeans, canola. Uh, we've already got one field of canola. So what I'm thinking is if we do the big field with soybeans, uh, do one field as wheat, and then I might do the other one as oats um, just to see what the oats are like what they look like and stuff like that because I've not actually uh, seen those up close yet so I want to actually lower the hopper down I do like the way they've now got the uh, the seed pipe that goes from the hopper to the back so you haven't got that illusion of the uh, magically transferring seed so if we select Soybeans, which is that one, and then turn that one on, lower that down, seed hoppers down, and away we go. So, what we'll probably need. To buy next is a weeder. Um, if we get the mechanical weeder for now, and hopefully keep on top of the weeds before they grow to the uh, next stage, but I believe you can only do the mechanical weeding on early growth stages of the crop. Once it gets to the second growth stage, I think it is. You do then need to spray any weeds that appear. Um, so we'll look at getting the mechanical weeder to start with um, when the weeds start showing up and then if we do have to get a sprayer 
we will uh, get one. Uh, the good thing is obviously the spray now it's not just for fertilization you can obviously do the herbicide as well so you're kind of getting two different uses out of the same equipment so what I'm going to do is continue seeding this and then we'll come back when we're all done Okay, so this is the soybeans all done. They're all planted and seeded. So we just need that extra fertilization state. It's about, so it's varying from 50, 55%, 62 in places. Um, but it is growing now. And there's no weeds currently. So we've just got the other two fields to do. And I'm going to do wheat in the one. Uh, I've just lift up the hopper and turn the cedar off. I'm going to do wheat in the one because what I'm thinking of doing is getting a, a chicken coop. So we've got some wheat, we can feed those. Um, we'll probably do. That's the trouble is these quite small fields so like saying really what's going to be worth planting in them. And um, we can probably at some point join these two together. But we will need to get a proper plough because the subsoiler doesn't allow you to create fields. So we could get a plough and plough those two together. We could plough all three together but we have got this track that goes up. And that is a handy shortcut down to the barn. Um, down that way um, so yeah there are a few trees as well up here we could cut down and extend this field up a little bit this way so there's quite a large area here. we could expand that field at some point while cutting those trees down and clearing that area so even though they are small fields there is a bit of room for expansion here so what we'll probably do is I need to try and remember what the symbols are. I'm sure that one's wheat. I'm going to get these two fields seeded. And then we'll come back and not sure what the stage of the fields will be, whether we'll need to go and get the weeder. We could go and buy it um, just so we've got it. Or at least have a look at putting a shed up somewhere so we can start putting some of this equipment away. Okay, so we've seeded all our fields now, they're all growing, so we've got oats in this one. Now if we take a look at the overview, I don't know why it always goes over there. Um, so we've got the all the four fields are now growing, and we've got wheat, soybeans, canola and oats growing. So we can harvest all of those with the standard combine header. So we don't need to have two separate ones. Uh, there's no weeds or anything growing we need to worry about. It's just that one stage fertilization. Um, so yeah, we're uh, all good for now. So if we can get these dropped off. And then what we'll do is have a look at getting a shed put up somewhere. So we can get some of this equipment stored inside a building. 
let's just turn that off so we have got some nice flat areas around here although there are some slight undulations in the terrain that you do have to obviously watch because that can massively increase the price of um, place balls if you're not too careful so the first thing i'd recommend is having the help menu open so if you're on pc press f1 just to bring up the help menu so that will show you the actual price of the place balls so if we go to um, place balls and we want sheds so we've only got the free to choose from so far i'm sure there'll be plenty more added on the mod hub soon so if we just go for the small one which is nine thousand um, so if you've got the help menu you can see at the top it says buy and then shows you the exact price so you can see there it's already 11,500 just for placing it there which is relatively fat, flat ground and if you rotate it round same position it's nearly a thousand pound cheaper um, but do bear that in mind so if we place it there it's 40,000 for a nine thousand dollar shed um, so you do have to be really careful so what i would recommend also is save your game before you place anything down because um, if you're not happy with the position you can at least then reload your game uh, apologies for that the uh the bin men decided to turn up and the dog started barking so i was saying if you before you place building down recommend saving your game because the way the ground works if you do not like where you've placed it and then you sell the building the ground doesn't revert back to its state so do need to be a bit careful so have a good play around um by different locations so you can see the different prices so if we put it there it's going to cost 20 odd thousand 13 so yeah we do have to be a bit careful of where we exactly put it i don't want to put it on like the, the end of a field where it's going to be headland so i'm thinking of about over here if we can get it for a decent price so we can get that one in there for 11 move it over a bit 10,000 there uh, 9,313 So I'm thinking around there, that's 10,400 isn't too bad. So if we place that one down. So there's our new shed. It's a shame there's not any lights inside here. Even if like automatic lights or anything, because it does get quite dark in the evenings now with the new lighting system. So we can start putting some of our stuff away. And it looks like our field of soybeans has gone to the first growth stage or is that weeds hopefully it's not weeds or is it a combination of both no no weeds yet but it hasn't taken long to go to the uh, first growth stage so let's just have a look at our uh... Uh, it does look like we've got weeds growing is that weeds no that's strange, like, partly, I presume that's where we only got up to um, when the growth stages um, changed over. So have we got weeds in here? No, still no weeds. Okay. <laughs> I want to get some weeds so we can do some weeding. Anyway, we'll get this all, get all this equipment put away into our new shed uh, tidy the place up a little bit uh, trying to think what's the uh, the best way to go about putting this in it's going to end up blocking blocking stuff in either way I think if we get rid of the help menu we don't need that now we can Drop that one off first. And I'll drop the seed hopper in this side and then I'll put the uh, the power harrow section in front of the cedar because 
when we come to reseed the fields we'll need to put that on anyway so we'll need to use that um, I don't think any of our fields will need ploughing again unless we plant certain crops I think it's like corn um, potatoes sugar beet and I think there is another one that you need to plough the field after harvesting um, I don't think it's an exact requirement that like you have to do it I think it's more like you lose 15% uh, on the yield if you don't uh, but we shouldn't need to have to do any of that uh, for a bit anyway so we'll put this one on the end so we can access it if we need to and then it's just the front weight and the seed bag will get under cover before it rains I don't want soggy seeds I'll just get the weight on the back. Uh, so I'm sure on the over the next few months and that we'll start getting a lot more buildings to be used for placeables, like sheds and storage buildings. Uh, what we'll do with the front weight is we'll just drop it down in front of this post. So it's accessible but not in the way. Uh, one mod I really do hope they do is the camera collision. Disable the camera collision so you can just glitch through the buildings. Uh, I don't know why they didn't put that in as a an option in game. So you could disable it if you want it. It's difficult when you're doing the time lapse because you want to try and keep the camera as still as possible. And there are times where you're going past posts and that the camera can flick right in and then flick right out again which isn't good so let's just leave that there for a bit so that's our new shed and the first building of our new farm here on Ravenport so it's easysheds.com so what I think we'll have a look at getting the chicken coop placeable So if we bring back up the help menu again, so we can see how much we're going to be spending. And we want animal pens, chicken chicken coop. So this is 20,000 to place if you've got a perfectly flat piece of land. So I can't place it up there because there's a tree. So we could get it down here somewhere. Actually, for an extra 20,000 we could get the large, but that's, yeah, that's quite a lot bigger. Um, and we can get that one right up in the edge there. So that would be 29,000 if we go there. 25, just try and find the, uh, the cheapest place, 23. So it's going to be cheaper there, we had 22 I think around about 22 is going to be the cheapest price we can get uh, we could pay a little bit more and go over and uh, save us a bit more space we kind of go there 29 uh, but it And you can also adjust the height if you hold down, if you're using the Xbox controller, you hold down the right bumper button and then use the right stick up and down. Unfortunately it doesn't show you the price when you do it, but if you see now it's 30,497. If we lower it down and then go back it's now 33,000. 
so now it's 26 so you can just tweak the height a little bit trying to find the cheapest price which I think was around 28600 that's as far over as we can go so I think we get that there so now we've got a nice little chicken coop it has flattened the train around the edge uh, but it's reasonably flat here anyway so it wasn't too bad so if we can get some chickens um, I do believe the chickens don't uh, reproduce um, as like a single total they do individual on colours so if you um, fill the if you have like four or five five white five black five brown the reproduction rate will be based on the five brown and the five black and the five white individually as groups rather than a combined total so if you want to start building up the stocks quicker and reproducing just get all one color i think will work better so i think we've go brown and we'll get uh i think we can fit a hundred in total so if we go two thousand dollars worth i think it's about 40 and then we'll get one rooster so i'll confirm it does say you do uh a transport fee is applied if you do not transport the animals with your own animal trailer but there is um none of the animal trailers show up chickens so i don't think you can actually transport them yourself anyway so you do have to pay the fee from what i know i'm sure there'll be a modded animal transport trailer that you can transport chickens so there's our rooster strutting his stuff and then we've got all our chickens so we do need to get some wheat or barley um, so now we've got the animals in place we've got the animal dialogue boxes come up so we've got the one rooster obviously there's no reproduction because we've only got one um, not sure if roosters would reproduce would they <laughs> on their own um, Obviously it's not updated yet because we've only literally just put them in but we do need to get some wheat or barley and we can buy a bag of wheat um, as chicken feed which we'll go and do. So I'm going to head up to the store we'll get the bag of chicken feed so we can actually feed them. They don't require water so it is just the feed and we do also need to get a bucket because the uh, the chickens, like the standard animals on 17, they do make a mess of their feed area. So we will need to clean that up. So we will need to get a bucket as well, uh, which does mean two trips. One to get the the uh, the bag of food and one to go and get a bucket. So I'll go and get those and get them back here. And then we can actually feed our chickens. Yeah, so I got there, the chicken feed, also got a bucket, I managed to get the uh, bow spike back as well, um, wedging it into one of the pallets on the back. So if we uh, just drop the bucket off there, as we'll need that for the feed trough. I did buy the little flatbed Stroutman trailer. Um, you can obviously customise it and put the sides on. So let's get the straps off. And I've got two more uh, big bags of seed and two fertilizer bags as well, which we're going to need at some point. But it's pointless coming back with a short trailer. So let's get the this into the feed trough and see how much that fills it up. So that's one full bag it's taken, and that's about half, 50 percent ish. So if we give them the other bag as well. 
Let's just get this other strap off. And this will be it for this episode. So we'll just drop this other bag of feed in. And then that will be it. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and the first Let's Play of this series on Ravenport. If you have, then please don't forget to hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, then please do consider subscribing. We're going to have new Farming Simulator 19 videos every day, including the time lapses and the Let's Plays. So that's all our chickens fed, and we they're lost a litre somewhere. <laughs> So we're just under 2,000 litres, but that looks like it's full. I'm not sure how long um, the food lasts now, whether it's still six days or it's more. Um, so you can see the reproduction rate now is 30 hours, but the productivity is quite low because we've only just fed them. So that will increase quite a bit um, when it updates again. Now we've got actual feed in there. And not sure the eggs are worth quite a bit if we quickly just take a look at the egg price so the egg price is um, at the moment it's going down um, but we've got the high price at the restaurant three thousand and three dollars um, I'm presuming that it's quite high because it takes a long time to get a thousand litres of eggs um, as you can see with wool it's 1017 which is quite low compared to 17 was and I'll presume they've probably changed it that um, although the price is a lot lower, um, you probably get more wool than you did before, so it doesn't take as long to fill up a pallet, um, but you'll get less for it. Um, I'm presuming that's the way. We'll hopefully have a look at that in the future when we can get some sheep. Um, but for now, that's all for me, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you again. Goodbye. <laughs>